Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Big Fish with my newest project, the Tree Analyzer, building upon the Pio Solver. So the Tree Analyzer is designed to add a tree view and tree analysis option to the Pio Solver program. So I will make a very quick introduction here and there's a second video which goes over like uh, 46 minutes which shows the full detail of the program's function functionality. So uh, I'll just give you a quick glance of what this program does here. So in short it's a tree generator that for example you can um, pre-select some um, options for tree generating you know, like stack sizes, a pot and say like you can uh, say create tree. So you can arbitrarily create trees from scratch, as you can see here. This is a very simple tree because we didn't allow any codes and we say like pot sizes. So it gets a very simple tree of out of position player raising and then fold raise, fold raise. So it's just a raise or fold game. If we allow codes, then the tree gets significantly bigger because now we have many, many different options. Um, you can display it in various different options or very, various different uh, uh, yeah, c categories here. You can fit it to the screen, you can zoom it and look at it in the original size. You have different colors like green, blue, red, or you have a multicolored uh, display of the tree. You can display it vertically or horizontally. You know, so the vertical display and there's a, a long and a short style. And <clears throat> the real great thing about this uh, tree builder is that you not only can generate arbitrary screes, uh, trees from, from scratch, but you can modify the, the trees at will. Uh, so take this, you know, go back to the horizontal view for example, um, take this tree here and say we, we don't want or we are not we are not interested in the betting option of the auto position player. We only want to, to like say we only we are only interested in the checking option because due to the previous actions there is no sense in analyzing the betting options. Then we simply delete the entire subtree which begins at 39. So I say 39. You can do it with the either with the, with the keys with the arrow keys or with selecting the node here. Say delete and then just say modify tree, and the entire subtree of 39 onwards gets deleted. With the same option, you can you can copy subtrees. Now, for example, you can take the tree number 18. Now, say like you say the node number 18. Say copy new parent is number one. Now, so you want to copy the 18 to the number one. Say modify tree, and then you get another subtree of the 18, which get, just gets duplicated. Sorry, duplicated. Now you can um, change the bed sizes for the following uh, elements here. Uh, so the, in that way you can operate on different bed sizes. Um, next thing is you can rebuild trees. Like for example, you, um, I just delete everything. I just delete the 39 which I just created and say delete again. Oops, delete, modify tree. And I add a single node manually. So I say add node to node number one. Say bed. And now I say not, not 150 but I say all in. You know, which is 1000. You know? <clears throat> so I have another node here, which is check, but 1000. And now this is not complete here because they are, they are missing the leaves of the tree, the end of the tree. So I can just say, um, go or navigate. I can, I can do it with the, with the arrow keys here. You, know, you can see then it, it just gets marked here. So I navigate to the um, node number 39 and say rebuild because there are some some elements missing so I say rebuild modify tree and then the tree gets built up and filled up with any uh, op possible options again which is only fold or call. The next option is you can import hand histories either by pasting them or by, by reading them from your holder manager or poker tracker or whatever and then just build your tree from a hand history. Okay now you will say that this is a pretty toy, but what does it, what does it really do? <laughs> and the answer is, once we created such a tree, we can pass that to the pile solver. So we get to the tree solver and we can add some ranges. You know, so let's say I have 25% range for player A and a 25% range for player B. And then we can say run solver. And then the tree gets translated to a pile solver tree or to the Pio solver notation, gets passed to the Pio solver and then calculated. So Pio solver is calculating the Nash equilibrium solution for this tree with the given ranges. 
and we see once the Nash distance gets to a to an uh, to a size which we can accept, which is under 0.001 BB at the moment, we can say stop. And then we read the results from the pile solver, which takes some time at the moment because it's reading all the nodes. And you have to consider that even though you only see like a handful of nodes, which is like around about 50 or 60 nodes here, every node that is following one of those dark green bubbles, that means here's a river card dealt. And that means that every subsequent node in my tree is represented or is representing 48 nodes in the Pio tree. The quote unquote Pio tree because Pio doesn't operate on trees but it operates on single nodes. So for for every of these nodes here in my tree, there actually are 48 nodes for every of these in the Pio tree. And this means or that this is why what it, why this that takes so long here. Now because these are only like 60 nodes in my tree, but around about like uh, 1.5k Pio nodes, which I have to read out. So I am passing the tree to the Pio server, let it calculate, and then I read back the results for every single node. Then I'm calculating the EVs and the frequencies for every single node, and then I give you the big picture um, on this tree display, which you can see, probably, hopefully see in a, in a second, once he is finished, once he finished reading the results from the solver. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Stop. Okay, so finished, and we get back to the zoom, so we can see what that did here. And now you see you know, where we had previously. This is the old version, still not actualized. So there's always zero percent, zero percent, zero percent, zero percent, no EVs, and so on and so forth. And in the solve tree, you can see the percentages. You now the first number always is the percentage. Uh, the the absolute percentage, the second number is a relative percentage, and now you can see the percentage every action is taken with. Like for example, if all of the player checks, we bet 150, then he is folding 52%, calling 41%, and raising 6%. Yeah, and then you can go through the entire tree and take a look at what happens here. And finally, if you want to take a deeper look at single nodes and go into the uh, range analysis, you have the node analyzer, which is a great thing, I think. And here you can deeply dig into the nodes and compare the ranges. Now, so you see the ranges. At the moment, it just are the starting ranges because I gave every player a 25% starting range. You see the board and you see the, the action buttons, now, which at the moment is only one action because it's check 100% according to our tree. Here you can see the equity distribution. Now, as, as both players have the same uh, range, the equity distribution is pretty even. Now, so there's that's pretty depolarized, um, but once we check, uh, it will probably take different actions. So say now we are still pretty even, but now we are splitting our range into a checking range and a betting range. Uh, so you see that like we are betting 30% and checking 70%, and once we bet, <coughs> you see that our range um, gets more polarized now. Uh, so it's like, um, okay, yeah, it's our out of position range gets gets more and more polarized now. So we have like very little part that is nuts, uh, small part that is air, and the, and the big part in the middle that is medium uh, equity against the in position player. And that way you can traverse down the entire tree, go to every single node and compare the ranges, see how the range look li looks like. Yeah, this is our betting range in position. This is the equity distribution of the out of position player against the betting range. And if you want to go even deeper and look into single combos, you can select the player here. Let's say, the, for example, the in-position player is where the bluffing, for example, A6 is a bluff combo. Now we can see, go to, on the A6 combo, where is it? A6. A9. Ah, something weird here with the sword here. So A6. And you see here some some additional um, numbers on the um, yeah on the actual equity distribution uh, and fraction we take this and equity with our hand and so on and the EV is not not correct at the moment as it seems and yeah this is what the program looks like this is how it's working that should give you a short insight a short introduction and yeah if you want to know more about the program there's a second video. Like I said, about 45 minutes, that gives you a deep insight and a practical example with a real practical question to answer with this program. And hopefully, you, yeah, I spark your interest. And 
if so, I would be glad about your feedback or glad about, appreciate any feedback and I would be glad to, to hear from you. Yeah? So thank you very much for listening and see you. Bye-bye. Good luck.